Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend and is doing well today. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a Docker container called Project Send. Uh, this is something I've had my eye on a for a while, uh, mostly just because I really like the way the dashboard looks. Uh, so basically, uh, Project Send is a self-hosted application that lets you upload files and assign them to specific clients that you create yourself. It's secure, private, and easy as per the uh, hub.docker.com page. Uh, so basically, like it says, you can uh, create, say, organizations and put people in organizations and share files either with that organization or with individuals. Uh, you don't have to have organizations. You can just uh, upload files and share them either, either publicly or privately. There's lots and lots of options in this Docker container. So I thought we would take a quick look at this and uh, just see how easy it is to get installed. So if we come over here and we scroll down uh, just a little bit, we can see that the supported architectures are x86 slash 64. That's gonna be your standard desktop or server grade processors. And of course, below that, we've got also ARM uh, processors. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you may have to uh, add a tag to your, uh, to your image there, but uh, it may also just pick it up automatically uh, just by detecting your hardware. So uh, just know that it should work, uh, but you may have to do some manipulation to make it work with a specific architecture other than x86. <clears throat> so below that, we've got our Docker Compose here. Uh, one thing I will say is that uh, this is kind of only half the battle here. This has only got uh, the application. It does say in here that you will need a database attached to this. I don't know why they don't attach a database. I don't know why they don't attach database to this in the first place. Um, so what I've done is I've actually uh, gone over here and created my own. Uh, basically, this will all look pretty much the same uh, as what you see over here. Uh, but I've gone ahead and added a, a database container to this as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Uh, basically, it's all pretty standard stuff. Um, we've got a couple of uh, volumes here that you'll need to change. Uh, one is for the configuration. Uh, one is for the uh, where the files will actually be stored, whether it's on your OS drive or an external drive or whatever. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you adjust these accordingly. Uh, below that, I've got uh, just this for time zone. I've gone ahead and put this in both of these uh, just to make sure that they stay in sync. <clears throat> Uh, we've got uh, ports 8110 opened up. Uh, that was just a random port that I picked. Originally, it said port 80, but there's so much that tries to use port 80 by default that I changed it. And then below that, we've, of course, got our uh, Maria database uh, with uh, Project Send as the user uh, for root and the database user and the passwords. Everything in there is Project Send. So you may want to change that uh, when we actually uh, start deploying this. That's completely up to you, though. Uh, but for security reasons, you probably should change that. <clears throat> and then below that, we've got uh, a volume for the database, and then is, again, a volume for the time zone, and both of these are uh, set to restart unless stopped. So basically, all we've got to do is just copy this, come over to Portainer, and you can see we've got it right here. Um, <clears throat> this will actually go really quick for me because I've already done this a couple of times during testing and that sort of thing. So uh, when I click Update the Stack, you're going to click uh, deploy the stack. Yours will take a couple of minutes to download and configure everything. But then once you're good to go, go ahead and click that button. Uh, we'll give it just a second here. And then we've, you can see we've got both of our containers, uh, one for the database, one for the application. Um, and you can see that this is running on port 8010. So if we click that, uh, here we can see that it's got uh, all of this stuff in here. Now, the one thing I will say, normally we would make this DB and uh, all of this would be project send. Uh, but for some reason, if we check that, it doesn't like it. So what we're gonna do is actually go back over to our uh, container here. Uh, we're gonna look for the, the Maria database uh, container. We're gonna go into the console and we're going to log in as root there. And we're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, host, oops, host name dash capital I. And we're gonna see it's 172.17.04. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy that. Oops. Go ahead and copy that like there. And then, oops, let's change that. And I'll put that in there. And all of this should be good to go. So now we can click check. Okay, so if this happens, what you may have to do, uh, I was kind of expecting that this might happen. Let's go back into stacks, go into project send. Um, and if we take a look at the logs, um, it's doing this weird thing about time zones. So we're gonna go back uh, and we're just going to go ahead and restart uh, both of these containers. We'll give this a second to do its thing. All 
All right, so the main container, the application container was restarted. Now the database has been restarted. Uh, all of this should be fine now, so we click check. Now everything is green, so just know that you may have to restart your containers in order to get it to work. Uh, so then we can go ahead and click on uh, write config file. So it says it did that, now we'll continue on to the installation. So we want a site name. Uh, I'm just gonna call it project send because I'm super original like that. Uh, this project send URI, we're going to leave this alone for right now, but we will be changing it later because this isn't any good if it's only on a local network. We wanna make this accessible to the internet so that you can share uh, with friends and family, that sort of thing. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll enter our name and we'll enter an email address. Um, and then we'll just say IDB tech. We'll do that. <clears throat> and then once we've got that, we can click install. All right, so now we can continue to the login. So we'll say IDB tech. And we'll give this just a second. And uh, if this doesn't load, uh, I've run into this issue as well. There it goes. Sometimes on that screen, it just kind of gets stuck. So I do a control F5 or a control R to reload the page. And it usually takes me right here. Luckily in this case, we didn't have to do any of that. So uh, we're good to go here. We've got our uh, recent activities over here on the top right uh, where we can see I logged in. Uh, we can see that this was installed. Uh, we can go back and look at all of the stuff, but right now it's just that. So let's go back to the dashboard. Um, here we'll, we'll actually see uh, a line chart for uploads from users, from clients and downloads, public downloads. All of that will show in this graph, uh, much like it does uh, right here. Uh, let's open that up real quick. Of course, that's not going to do us much good. Let's see. No, but it'll look something like that. And of course, uh, here we can see that this should work on basically any device. So let's come back over here and let's dig through a little bit. Uh, so we've got files here. We can upload files. Um, and uh, we can uh, add, so we can up, uh, we can upload multiple files here. So let me just go over uh, to my uh, my my uh, drive here. Go to video assets, and I'm just going to grab a bunch of files. I'm just going to drag them over. Um, so here we can uh, we can click add files, and that'll bring up uh, our context or our window here, or we can drag and drop. So let's click upload files, um, and here you can give each file a name. Uh, you can give it a description. Uh, you can assign this to people. You can give it categories. Um, you can, there's a lot of options. There are a lot of options in here. You can set expiration dates. You can allow for public downloading if you want. And of course you can do this on a file by file basis. Uh, so once you've got all of that uh, set up the way you want it, you can click save. And here you can see all of the files that we've got. Uh, here we so we're here we can manage files. Uh, the one thing I will say that I don't necessarily like about this is if I wanted to, uh, open this, uh, this JPEG file, if I click it, uh, it just downloads it. I wish there was a thumbnail for that or a, 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 like a jQuery pop-up or something. Uh, but for some reason, they just have it download. Um, it's, it's a little different when you log in as a client um, where you could actually see a little thumbnail over here somewhere. But uh, just know that if you're logged in as admin, if you try to view a file, it's just gonna download it. Uh, so we've got orphan files where there's nothing assigned. Uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. Categories, you can create categories um, and subcategories, that sort of thing to categorize uh, your, your files. In this case, we've just uploaded images and Photoshop files, um, but there are options uh, down here, I believe, uh, somewhere in some of this. Um, there we go. Uh, when you get into security, you, you can uh, dictate what kinds of files you want to be able to be uploaded. Um, you can set... Uh, uh, requirements for passwords. You can set up reCAPTCHA if you want to do that for login purposes. Um, but I just wanted to show you that, that there are the options to, so you can set up what kind of files are allowed and not allowed. Um, and so we've got clients, we can set up new clients. Um, I like to set up groups first. Um, if In fact, if you notice, uh, if you, you actually want to assign a, a, a client to a group, the way I like to think of it is groups are businesses and clients are individual people inside that business. Um, so you can assign, let's say you've got, you know, a, a business that you're doing with some work with, but you've got somebody in billing, you've got somebody in marketing and you've got somebody in creative and you, the, the person in billing doesn't need to have creative stuff sent to them. So you can be real granular about your, uh, the way you set up your categories and that sort of thing uh, for your clients. Um, below that, we've got system users. That would be admin users, basically. 
Uh, that would be you, uh, anybody else you want to be able to manage the site. Uh, they've got templates. Um, so you can, it uh, looks like, uh, change the way this looks. Uh, so themes, if you want to call it that. We go under options, we've got general options, uh, site name, um, time zone. Oops, I'm going to change mine to Denver. Time format, I like month, date, year, because I'm, I'm an American and that's just how we do it here. Um, so we can uh, save all of this. Now, right here, uh, earlier I said we would be changing the, the URL here because we want this to be accessible from the real world. So what we're gonna do, uh, first thing, is we need to set up a domain name. So I'm just gonna call this ps for project sendbtechytcom uh, I've got that as a C name pointed to, uh, to my home IP address. So once we've got that, what we can do is come over here. We can, uh, this is Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, you can do the same thing with traffic if you wanted to do that. But right now I'm just doing this in Nginx Proxy Manager. So we'll say add a new host. Uh, the domain name will be uh, ps.dbtechyt.com. Uh, the scheme will be HTTP. Uh, the forward will be uh, the IP address of the device you're pointing to. So we're gonna say 192.168.1.30. And we're gonna say 8010, that's the port that we put it on. Uh, and if we wanna double check that, what we can do is actually come back over to here. Here we can see it's 192.168.1.30 and port 8010. So we can use those uh, to fill in uh, this spot here. We're gonna click on block common exploits. Uh, publicly accessible uh, should be good there. For our SSL, we're going to request a new SSL. We're gonna click force and we're gonna require HTTP to support and we're gonna say agree. Now, the one thing I will say about this, there's a little glitch in Nginx Proxy Manager that when we click save, uh, we're gonna give this a second and uh, hopefully we don't come up with any errors here. There we go. <clears throat> so let's see, today is the 27th. So that is this one right here. So we got ps.dbtechyt.com. The problem is if we go in here and we click on edit uh, and we go to uh, SSL, these won't have been checked. So you'll have to go back in and recheck those. <clears throat> now what we wanna do is come back over to here. We're gonna say HTTPS uh, ps.dbtechyt.com, just like that and click on save options. Now, oops, so then what we can do, 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 click here. All right, so something went a little wonky there. Let's double check this. Oops. Oh, I see what happened there. You should put a trailing slash on there. There we go. I forgot the trailing slash. So uh, we'll say DB tech. Uh, there we go. Now we're logged in. Uh, so I guess it is super important if you go into options and uh, general options, uh, it's important that you put that trailing slash. I've never had that issue before. Uh, this is the first one of these applications that I've had to put that, uh, that trailing slash in there. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my 19 year old cat losing her mind at my headboard right now. Um, so forgive that. She's crazy, deaf, dumb and blind, or deaf and blind anyway. Um, obviously not dumb because she can still speak very, very loudly at great length. Uh, so let's see, what else do we have here? Clients, um, uh, you can set this up so clients can register themselves if you wanna do that. Um, I, that that's completely up to you. Uh, you can auto approve new accounts if you wanna do that. Uh, you can set it up so clients can upload, uh, so they can delete their own, they can set an expiration date on their own if you wanna do that. Um, that's all up to you as far as how you wanna handle this. Uh, privacy, um, you can say don't allow search engines to index the site. Again, this is, this is probably something you wouldn't want uh, uh, search engines to index, so something to keep in mind there. Um, so lots of options here. Um, Probably don't want public stuff there. Uh, email notifications, uh, you can set these up, but you will need to uh, change, probably change your mailer to be either SMTP or uh, Gmail. Uh, then you'll need to fill in all of the relevant information here so that this, uh, the application can connect to your mail server, however you want to do that. Uh, security, again, we've kind of touched on this as far as what requirements might be uh, for uh, accessing uh, the website and uploading files, that sort of thing. 
Uh, let's see, thumbnails. Uh, you can set thumbnails. Again, that's going to be on client side stuff. Uh, branding, you can change the logos. Uh, you can change all kinds of stuff in there. Social logins, you can do that if you'd like. Uh, it looks like they've only got the option for Google right now. Uh, email templates, you can go in and modify your email templates uh, for what you'd like that to look like. Um, and then under tools, uh, again, we've just got actions here for, or sorry, actions that have happened, things that have happened on the site, the server logs, that sort of thing. You can see all of the files that were uploaded, who uploaded them, uh, when they were uploaded, that sort of thing. So a uh, pretty robust little system here, very, very easy to install. Uh, just a couple little caveats there uh, that you need to make sure of uh, when you install this and change the URL, that sort of thing. Uh, so hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, um, as per usual, all of this will be available uh, in, the, <clears throat> or in the description down below. Uh, there'll be a link to different things down there. Uh, also, while you're down there, uh, there are a couple of links that you can check out. Uh, one is coffee. That's a one-time tip. Uh, I've had several people uh, over the last uh, week or two uh, send me little donations, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, also, even just yesterday, we picked up two new patrons. Uh, so thank you to, to the new patrons as well as the patrons who have been around for a while. I really do appreciate you guys uh, helping support the channel, especially with everything going on. AdSense is wonky. Uh, so you guys really have been helping to kind of fill in those gaps for me. I really do appreciate you uh, and, and and you guys doing that. Much appreciated there. There will be links to Coffee and Patreon down there. Uh, two of the three levels of Patreon that are down there uh, will give you access to a patrons only Discord server where we can just chat about whatever you'd like to chat about, get tech support, ask questions, that sort of thing. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.